Hi, I'm Evan Berry. And I'm Dylan Cording. And we're here in Menlo Park at Pacific Biosciences to talk with Chairman and CEO Hugh Martin. We're going to ask him all about their smart DNA sequencing technology. Well, um, the way sequencing technology today in the industry works is there's some set of, or series of very complicated chemical processes and they add one base at a time and examine one single base at a time. And the world speed champ today is a company called Illumina and they can look at one base every 53 minutes or in other words one base an hour. So uh, our idea is that instead of using a complex set of artificial chemical processes to um, examine the DNA, what we do is we let Mother Nature do what she does best, which, as you know, um, every cell eventually will divide and somebody has to make a copy of the DNA that's in the nucleus of the cell for the new nucleus. And there's a, a, a little enzyme called the DNA polymerase. Its sole job is to replicate your DNA. So uh, it latches onto your DNA, inspects the base that it's latched onto, and says, oh, I'm looking at a T, it says, I need the building block for a T, and it grabs that and then incorporates it into a new nascent strand that it's building. So, and then it moves on to the next base. So it's effectively sequencing. It goes base by base and looks at it. So uh, we have a pretty simple idea. We eavesdrop on it. We watch that guy work. So we fluorescently label the four building blocks called nucleotides, four different colors, and then we get a different colored flash every time it incorporates one of those uh, bases and so we actually get a series of pulses red green yellow so on and so forth and those pulses tell us oh that was a T a G a C and A so we go as fast as it goes and as long as it goes so um, right now we're running anywhere between one and three bases per second so that's about 20,000 times faster than <laughs> Illumina we have to build a machine this one that we have today that I'll show you looks at 80,000 holes simultaneously 80,000 enzymes all working in parallel and each one of them is emitting flashes that are on the size on the order of about um, 500 to 1,000 photons if you wanted to sequence a human on any of the existing boxes today um, it literally would be if you took all of the reagents you'd have to buy yeah. in the boxes, yeah. it would fill a tractor trailer, absolutely fill a tractor trailer to sequence a human. Whereas, you know, going back to what we do, Mother Nature sequences your entire genome yeah. in, with just the material in the nucleus of a cell. In other words, we use one molecule for every base we sequence. Yeah. So, what, the reason people are so excited about this technology and the cost aspect that you mentioned is the cost, the incremental cost to do a sequencing run is virtually zero. So the three advantages are read length, we have much longer read length, um, incremental cost, so it's only $100 versus $10,000, mm -hmm. and what we call granularity, that you can run a small number of patients if you need to, you don't have to amass them all up into a huge quantity. What's unique about our company is quite frankly, we changed everything. Every other sequencing company that exists, Illumina, Applied Biosystems, um, Life Technologies, 454, all of them were developed by some chemist or molecular biologist who came up with a new idea about chemistry and said, okay, great, this could work. Now, what hardware is there off the shelf, like total internal reflection microscopy or others, to see this chemical reaction? What we did from the very beginning was we said we're going to change everything. So we said we want the polymerase to free run. The minute you do that, there are a host of optical problems. It's a really, the enzyme is only 15 nanometers on the side. So we've had to build a completely new detection system, a completely new labeling system in, in chemistry, and a completely new enzyme. So everything is different. So we dump all the nucleotides, all the labeled, nucleotides up above and on top of this whole thing. Mm -hmm. So they're in the dark because no, they're fluorescent. They only light up when the laser shines on them. They're in the dark. They're completely in the dark because none of the light gets through the hole. Only when they get down near the enzyme do they light up. So we only see them when they're near the enzyme because the, only the bottom 30 nanometers will lit up. So they're all in the dark and then they diffuse in and out of that hole really fast because at the nanoscale that's what happens. And as they're diffusing in and out, they're dark, 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 and when they get down there, they're light. 
and they lit, lit up, but because they're visiting really quickly, we just see a low buzz, bzz, mm -hmm. unless the enzyme grabs one, and when it grabs it, it holds it right down there in the 30 nanometers, and it lights up, and we see this big flash. Oh, yeah. So a much longer time. Exactly. So in fact, um, the signal to noise that we get is the difference between diffusion bzz, and incorporation time, yeah. because we get a much bigger, when that incorporation pulse, we get all of the photons that are under that curve. What um, uh, Dr. Jody Puglisi did over um, in your structural biology department, he took a ribosome, which uh, makes proteins. He took a ribosome and put the ribosome in the bottom of a zero mode waveguide or a little pocket. Mm -hmm. Then he labeled four of the tRNAs, which are the sort of the, the uh, the food that the ribosome uses yeah. to make a protein, he labeled them, and we actually watched a protein being made in real time, never before seen, because you can never run a ribosome at native concentration. And so, um, it was the, this paper was just published in Nature Methods, and um, in the, the reviewer said this is probably one of the ten most important papers of the year. Wow. I mean, it's a really big deal, and it's just because we can now look at a ribosome making proteins. Another thing we can do, uh, which is a collaboration um, that we did with the University of Texas, is we've immobilized a reverse transcriptase in the bottom of the zero wave, and we can actually watch RNA being made in real time also. So a lot of possibilities, but Stanford, I think, is going to mainly be looking at sequencing applications. Okay. We're going to get to the point, probably by 2014, where you can sequence an entire human mm -hmm. with one chip. So, at that point, you can sequence a human for a hundred bucks. Now, that will raise some ethical issues. Who gets sequenced? Why? Who gets access to the, that data? Are all going to be very interesting um, questions? I think posed by the fact that you can now sequence anything down the road. The issues will be, you know, there'll be ethical issues for patients like. Do you want to tell them something when there's nothing they can do about it? Uh, then there'll be issues about um, what do you do if, from an insurance point of view, you know, if you're an insurance company, what you're trying to do is maximizing your profits, and one way you could absolutely do that is if you had a completely accurate actuary table for every single customer, you could really tune your machine, which you would not want everybody to know. You wouldn't want no one would really want an insurance company to know precisely what their genetic profile completely looked like. So all of that optic stuff you saw is sitting under here, and all that robot stuff is here. This is where you load the... Um... So these are the individual chips, strips, and then this is where the reagents go in here, and with the pipette tips. You load it up, and then you load it in, and takes inventory. This, one is, this is just a demo, so it's not All the compute is done here. So the compute resources are on here. There's like six quad core fastest Intel things going. But that's it.